is that you know it's going to be quite a bit of information overload to some degree um, if you haven't gone through volume one um, however I'm going to go very very slow um, and what I'm going to do at this time is make sure that all of you have my email address and from now on I'll start trying to always put it up I'll put it up before the end of this lecture today and then the questions that you have you can email me those questions and then we will spend time with those questions on the the ne very next lecture making sure that everybody's up to speed that if you don't understand something and I haven't pointed out real clearly to you where to get that information then you'll have an opportunity to pull on me in order to be able to really understand what we're doing now what I'm what we're doing here more important than anything else is that I'm showing you how to read the Bible for the rest of your life um, the more you learn the, the Hebrew the more you're going to understand how to properly translate the Bible I think one of the things that one of the mistakes that people make is they just want to have an interlinear Hebrew Bible and they want to use Strong's Exhaustive Concordance um, they want to look at the Cal Simple Stem uh, which is the three um, consonant vowel uh, it's good three consonant verb and then they want to um, utilize that information to suddenly have an insight into the Bible and it doesn't work it's just it doesn't work that way it's just not that simple you're going to have to learn how to conjugate the verbs you're gonna to have to learn how to decline nouns and you're gonna to have to be willing to get in here and wrestle with how to read a sentence properly uh, one of the things I want to point out about Hebrew step-by-step -step volume one is that the end of each chapter pretty much starting I think probably about chapter six or seven you have reading exercises and translation exercises you can't find a better book on simple translation because you've got your answer key and if you don't have an answer key I'll provide that for you uh, but it's just like you know um, Adam ate the apple okay the apple was red or whatever and so it's really simple Adam's wife was Eve Adam and Eve lived in a tent I mean it's just real simple stuff and so you want to, it helps to build your confidence and <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through Genesis chapter 1 once again we're gonna go through it very very slow and it's gonna be very important for you to make sure that you recognize that unless you're willing to learn your vocab and do your own spelling bees and spelling exercises then you're really not going to get anywhere you know I, I think people go to Bible school and think that it's like going to church you don't have to do anything but just sit there and listen and um, unfortunately I know that there are a number of Christian Bible schools that that's basically all they require of you it's almost like going to church you sit there you listen to another lecture <clears throat> at the end of the quarter they give you some little test and then you're on your merry way with your paper that you can pin to the wall that says you got a degree well we don't want to do that we want you to learn how to study the Bible we want you to learn the information in the Bible and that takes work that's not just sitting listen listening you're only going to get so much you're only going to retain so much information when you all you do is sit and listen you have to listen you have to read you have to write you have to ask questions you have to review you have to have repetition and you know unfortunately I found that many people that haven't spent the time in school lack the discipline and so if that is you I pray 
that you will go ahead and gain the discipline that you missed out on by not going to school and recognizing that there is no profit in being lazy or undisciplined. So I want you uh, to really take these things to heart. And, I, and you should actually do the same thing in church meetings. When you go to church, you should take notes. Um, you, it's, especially the scriptures, as the main scriptures that are being referred to, you know, quick little notes that allow you to remember the things that you ought to review and study to make sure that what you're hearing is accurate instead of just being indoctrinated. I, you know, I'll say it over and over again. I don't want to indoctrinate people. You know, I want to teach people how to study and how to learn. And so without further ado, we're going to get into this. Don't, it's, going to be, it's going to be once again, don't, uh, you know, a little overwhelming. So don't get, you know, too overwhelmed and be afraid. Just walk through this with me. Some of it's going to be familiar because I tried my best to teach you how to pronounce Hebrew words and learn Hebrew words already in the context of Genesis chapter 1. And so we're going to focus in on Genesis chapter 1, 1 through 8, until all the information that we discover in Genesis 1 through 1, 1 through 8, you're comfortable with. And um, one of the first things I'm going to do here is that once again, this is lesson one, Genesis 1, 1 through 8 in Biblical Hebrew Step-by-Step -step Volume 2. Um, but we're going to also refer to Biblical Hebrew Step-by-Step -step Volume 1 because Lesson 35 you actually goes over the same passage. I think it only takes the, in the first seven verses. But it becomes supplemental. And so tonight, as much as possible, I don't know how much we're going to get through tonight, but you'll see every time we're dealing with any kind of a piece of information as we walk through these two books, that we're going to stop and we're going to go back to the basics in lesson one, and we're going to review it. And if I don't give you enough information to really satisfy your questions or to supply the, the answers that you may need to understand the, uh, the, the, um, the passage, then email me and we'll go into it even deeper until everybody's got it. <clears throat> One of the first things I want to point out is I want you to get the vocabulary down in, in Lesson 35. And, you know, and there's a little bit of redundancy um, also in lesson one. What I'm going to do for you is I'm going to read this. I'm going to try to my best to read slowly and pronounce as, as articulately and accurately as possible so that then you have the YouTube to continue to go over because you've got to do that. You've got to practice this until you have a fluidity with it. And before I was saying, you know, just read it. You don't have to worry about what you're reading, we'll get to that later. Well, we are now at the later, okay? Now you have to not only be able to read it properly, but you've got to learn what the words mean, and you've got to understand how to, how to you know, um, find, the, 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 especially on the verbs, the three consonant root, because verbs are made up of three consonant roots. We're going to really be emphasizing that in, this, in these lectures just on chapter 1, uh, because we're going to be talking about the, the pu'al verb, which pu'al is, means uh, verb in Hebrew, and the pu'al, util, utilizing the word pu'al allows us to identify uh, things about weak verbs that we're going to learn so that you know how to um, properly recognize them because weak uh, cons uh, weak verbs are defined by weak consonants in, in verbs and then what takes place with that is you don't recognize the three consonant root because one of the consonants <laughs> dropped off and so we're going to teach you how to, how to recognize that, how to identify what consonant dropped off and that's one of the first things we're going to be getting into because it's one of the first complicated issues that we have to deal with and this passage. And so 
to start off with, I'm just going to read this for you. Bereshit bara Elohim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz v'ha'aretz hayeta tohu vavohu v'choshek al penei tohom v'ruach Elohim merechetet al penei hamayim v'yomer Elohim yahi or v'yahi or v'yir Elohim et haor kito vayavdel Elohim bin haor ubin hachoshek vayekra Elohim laor yom belachoshek kara laila vayehi erev vayehi voker yom echad Vayomer Elohim Yahi Rakia Betoch Hamayim Vayehi Mavdel Bin Mayim Lemayim Vayas Elohim Et Harakia Vayavdel Bin Hamayim Ashir Mitachat Larakia Uvin Hamayim Ashir Maal Larakia Vayehi Hin Vayekra Elohim Larakia Shamayim Vayehi Erev Vayehi Voker Yom Shani. Now, um, I want you to be able to do that. And I want you to get as fast as you possibly can. Um, and the first thing that we're going to do to help us get good at reading this is we're going to make sure we've got all of our vocabulary down. We're going to make sure that we understand all of these words. So the first word we come to is Bereshit, in the beginning. And that's one of the reasons I have this supplemental. Of course, it's here too, over here in... Step-by-step uh, step volume two. So on the left hand when you see me doing this on the left hand side That's volume two on the right hand side. That's volume one. I've just got them up in my program Side by side and I'm using logos Bible software uh, for uh, the, for my Format on Hebrew language and this is just a layout that I've created myself So you can't find this layout if you're using logos Bible software you're, and you search Hebrew language, you're going to get this. I created this myself. I'm willing to help anybody learn how to do that, how to create your own layouts if you want. Um, and, I, and I would say this, Logos Bible Software is the premier academic uh, Bible software. It's expensive, but you'll use it for the rest of your life, and it's well, well worth your uh, investment. So better a sheet. And um, here, what we're showing here with Bereshit is it comes from a root, a three-letter root, Rosh, Rosh, which is head. And one of the things that I, I do want to say, too, um, that I want you to make note of, just as I'm, because I wrote a few things down here, and that is um, there is a, uh, uh, there is a review test on chapter 19 and it gives you all, it gives you 100 vocabulary words. It's less than 19. And in, uh, in fact, in uh, Biblical Hebrew, step-by-step -step volume one, um, it is, oh, I didn't write down the page. I'm sorry, I should have written down the page. Chapter 19, you'll see 100 vocab words. Listen. Start working on that. Um, and once again, you know, you've got uh, the answer key. If you don't have the answer key, email me. I will give you the answer key. I want you to work on um, not only pronouncing them, uh, but also writing them. And then if there's anyone who needs me 
to go through that vocab and pronounce the Hebrew for you, uh, just email me once again, and, um, and I will do that. And let me just make sure that, that I put up real quickly my email address, just in case anyone doesn't have it. Um, let me just do that real quick. I'll just type it in here. It is, let me see if we can blow it up. It is A-W-A-K-E-S-D at me dot com. Kind of blow that up real quick. You guys can write that down. Let's see if I can get it as big as I possibly can for you. Real quickly, try to get through this here. Otherwise, who knows, I might forget. That should be big enough for you. And then we'll just have that each and every time. So it's awake, A-W-A-K-E-S-D, at me.com, okay? Um, so once again, any questions, any, any concerns, any things you want me to do for you, then just email me at that, at this email address, and I will respond to your questions. And like I said, we'll do them right off the bat um, at the first part of the lecture. So the first, first thing I want you to do, rather than understanding like I just went through, what is the three consonant root from which Bereshit was actually derived, um, just learn it here first. And then we'll get over here and, and, and start helping you understand how to identify a, a three consonant root which is once again it's so essential it's so very important all nouns and adjectives are built on these three consonant roots and um, so um, what we want to do is once again make sure that everybody's got a good vocabulary here day is yom it also can be yamin yamin okay the plural days, seven, shava, okay, shav, shava, and I'm just, I don't really, I can't really see the consonants there, and I can't really blow it up here, and unfortunately, but um, usually it's very close in its pronunciation to a word that's very familiar to you, yeah, shava, I just did it by memory but I always like to check. <laughs> um, and that's Shabbat, which is Sabbath. Shabbat. Shabbat is a way to say Sabbath. Shabbat is another way, because it's seven, okay? And then, um, then we have two forms for was, Haya, right there, and Hayata. Both are, occur in this passage, okay? There's... Uh, Really not a lot of difference there, okay? We'll talk a little bit about it later. Um, darkness, cho, it, that little bit of cha, choshech, choshech, cho, because there's, don't forget your holam up there, choshech, okay? Face, panim, wind, ruach. I don't like translating ruach, wind. I rather translate it spirit. Um, although there is places where you know, you can argue it's just, it just doesn't make any sense to translate it spirit. Got to translate it wind. There's another Hebrew for, word for wind. I like to keep things as constant, as constant as possible and as consistent as possible, especially in, uh, in translating uh, Hebrew and Greek words. Oh, let me say something else real quick because Genesis... I think that that's one of the things that everybody's like, well, where do we get Genesis when, you know, the Hebrew Bible, it says Bereshit, because this is what it's called. This book is called, not called Genesis, it's called Bereshit. And, um, and that's the way most chap books in the Bible are, um, are named. They're named by the very first word that occurs um, in the book. And in this instance, it's better sheet, and it means in the beginning. <clears throat> Genesis is simply a Greek word 
uh, meaning origin, which is what you would find in the Septuagint. It means origin. And one of the things that I really like to point out to people, because, you know, you'll hear commentaries and you'll hear, you know, theologians say, you know, well, Genesis 1 and 2 gives to us the entire history and story of creation in two chapters. But it doesn't. Angels, the creation of angels aren't there. And so, you know, and I'll just hit, hit you with that one. But it does give us the information concerning creation as it relates to Adam, okay? And there's a lot to say there, but I'm not going to go into it right now. So back here, let it be Yahi, um, which is also related to Haya and Hayata. So Yahi, let it be. Um, then Or and Light. And then here is the plural of it, feminine, uh, um, Orot. And then um, Saw, Ra'a. And then Star is ko, a K sound with a very guttural sound on the next half, kochav, kochav, ko, it's a hard one, kochav, so kochav. So to start off with, you might not say the guttural, just kind of go kochav, and then go kochav. So like coke, ko, coke, don't go ko, kakola. Kokav, so kokav is a more proper uh, pronunciation. It'd be kokav. Kokav. Tough one. I'll try to do it as many times as I possibly can to get it across. Kokav. Start off, just go kokav, kokav, and then make the second kaf more guttural, kochav. And just keep working at it until it kind of just flows, kochav, 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 kochav. Then key for that, then vayechra, from kara, the three consonant root. Strong, the nice thing, and, and especially yours, it's going to mean something to you if you've gone through uh, Hebrew, Biblical Hebrew, uh, uh, Volume 1. And that is, your strong verbs um, are going to e be easy to identify. It's your weak verbs that you're going to have some real challenges with. And so I'll do my very best to help to find the difference and really help you understand, um, you know, the various different pua pe, um, pua uh, aleph, pua lamet, and, you know, we'll talk more about that. If that meant nothing to you, then just hang on. We'll get that to you. Um, and that's one of the ways that we really deal with, with uh, the weak verbs. Okay, so fourth. Uh, see, Ravii, fourth, Ravii, Ravii. A little bit of drill on the Resh, Ravii, Sun, Shemish, Moon. So this is jumping ahead here because these aren't actually in the vocab for just, for, for just um, Genesis 1. 1 through 8, and let me just look. Yeah, because they only did 1 through 7 here. And so now we're getting out of what's actually in those verses. But um, Bayar, um, there is, that's definitely in the first eight verses. And it, we've lost one of the consonants there because it's a weak verb, and, and I'll talk to you about that here in just a minute. And, and help to identify that a little bit better. Eretz, and then uh, this feminine plural form, Arzot, and uh, I think that does it for the vocab there. Let's just go over here and look at the vocab here. And then the nice thing that we have 
is we got these grammar notes, these explanation notes down here, both in chapter 35, as well as you'll see them over here in Biblical Hebrew step by step. And so you want to, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go over them because it, it's going to help you translate because what we're going to do is we're not going to move from, we're not going to move from this first chapter, Genesis chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 8, till everybody can, everybody can read the eight verses and you can do your own translation. We're gonna, we're, you're starting your own translation. Um, the Lord has made you kings and priests. And every king in Israel was supposed to translate at least the first five books of Moses. Um, at the very beginning of their reign or just before they started their reign. So this is your first part of making your own translation of the Bible. And it's not really making your own translation. It's making your own copy because you're just supposed to copy everything. Um, in this instance, it, it would be... a copy and a translation because obviously Hebrew is not your first language. So, real quick, just run, let's run through this. Let it be Yahi, Haya, uh, and he saw Bayar from Ra'a to see. Uh, ki, once again, you don't have the strong guttural sound because it has the dogish in it. Uh, and that's, that simply is bat. <laughs> Bayabdel from Badal is to be divided. Uh, Rakia, permanent. Um, Bayath from Asa, uh, and he made. Very important. Both of these have lost, this lost the hay, which we'll uh, talk to you more about it. Um, but it, it is the Lamed hay. <clears throat> the Lamed hay is a weak verb. It lost the Lamed hay. And you'll understand what that means if you haven't already studied and tracking with me. Up here, you can see here, they lost the lamed hay as well. It's a weak verb with a ending in hay. And you're already saying, why is it called the lamed hay? It's a pu'al lamed hay. And I'll show you why. And we'll, I'll take you back. It's, I believe it's chapter 14. And I'll show you in chapter 14. Yeah, it's chapter 14, page 79. Weak verbs and the nomenclature used. And also chapter 20. And I got the pages. So I'll keep giving you that. So if you missed that or you, it didn't really stick in, you'll just be able to go back, you'll be able to study it, and you're going to learn it in the context of translation pretty much like a promise. Metachat, metachat, under, ma'al, above, and um, two, two opposites. You should try to remember those. You'll see them. You know, many of these, if not all of them, are going to be used again and again throughout Scripture, okay? Some of them are less occurring. The nice thing about that vocab that I gave to you, referred to you to, to study in chapter 19, <clears throat> excuse me, those, are, those words occur so many times in the Bible. I mean, goodness, you want to learn those. And then, once again, Bereshit from, uh, from Rosh. We've already done that, the Barah. Boy, you heard that one many times. Tohu. Uh, tohu. It, it has unformed here. That's, that's not bad. Tohu. It, it has different things that you could... And that would be a good one right there for you to go and look in different lexicons and see all the different ways that you could actually um, translate tohu. Could be... And... Um, bo, bohu. Tohu and bohu. Um, both meaning void, empty, waste, desolate, formless kinds of things. Okay? Here they got just unformed and void. Um, and, and it's actually, you know, well, I'm going to give you the exercise to go through there and look at that. And you tell me what you think is really the most dominant way tohu is translated and bohu is translated, and especially in light of the way they're used elsewhere in Scripture. So you don't just listen, and, the, and I'm making a point. You don't just, li, you know, take a lexicon or, you know, theological workbook of the Old Testament is one of the great dictionaries. It's one of the great lexicons. If you want to really start studying a word, 
you use theological workbook of the Old Testament. But still, what you want to do is you want to go and look at that word and how it's used elsewhere in Scripture because then that begins to flesh out for you what really is the right way to translate this. And because you'll get yourself in Scriptures and context that will limit and I'm going to tell you right now, unformed, unformed is going to be challenged, okay? As much as I appreciate Mansoor. Okay, so, Choshech, um, Choshech is another good word that's used over it again, darkness. Panim, another one, face, surface. Tohom, uh, deep. Ruach, Ruchot. Um, being feminine, once again, it's a feminine noun. And then, merachefet, um, and we can talk more about, once again, identifying the root uh, for this particular word. Uh, we'll talk about that more later. Okay, so what I want to do is just go through some, let's just walk through uh the notes that they have in the book because I think that it is a good common ground for both of us. And that's what I didn't like about the way I did the first uh, sessions on Hebrew 101. Okay, Hebrew, this Hebrew uh, 101 series. Uh, and 102 and 103. Because I didn't feel like I had a good common ground, a good basis for us to be able to communicate because I was throwing out information for you that was from um, supplemental or other sources of, uh, of like alphabet and people were confused about the alphabet and confused about uh, various different things with respect to the vowels. And so I thought, my goodness, what we would do better, all, what would be better, especially having this kind of gap or gulf between you and I, you're on the other side of the computer, on the other side of the camera for me, is that we have a format that allows us to more perfectly communicate with one another, i.e. these this outline that is here in these books. So uh, as we've already talked about, better sheet is in the beginning. It comes out of the word rosh for head. It's used over and again. Uh, 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 Rosh Hashanah, head of the year, okay? Um, Shamayim is heaven or sky, and um, Shamayim occurs only in the dual form, and if you didn't get that, look at this. It says, go back to lesson 22. And that's one of the things that I really wanted, reason why I'm walking you through this. I want to show you that you can catch up if you're behind or maybe you didn't even have time to get into step-by-step um, -step volume one over the summertime. You can still keep up while you catch up. Uh, it's difficult to catch up and, um, and, and, you know, having to start back at lesson one and work through all the basics. So... You can start back at lesson one and be working through lesson one all the way through. I think it's lesson 35 and most of those things. Many of the lessons you can discount. You'll see, um, you'll see why, perhaps. Because they're just easy. I mean, it, you have reviews. I think you have reviews like every four or five chapters. And so you can take the review test. Um, also, at the end here of uh, Biblical Hebrew Step by Step Volume 1, they have a final exam, too. So, you see how well you're doing. But, um, once again, utilize this. Go back and look at what does it mean about dual form. And how is it that dual form, um, you know, you have, you have a plural form here, but it's a dual form, and it's got a, so it's, it's, it, we're going to, whether it's singular or plural, it's always going to have this. Do, so the context is going to define for us, is this one heaven or heavens? Okay? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, or heaven and, or did he create the heaven and the earth? Well, it could be both. Um, and then here's, you know, this is the difference. Land, Eretz, 
has a plural form, okay? Um, erzot, I, I'm pretty sure. Or does it? It may not. Uh, you might have to just edit that out. Um, and what they're showing here is, I think, just, you know, you're learning how to spell properly, and you're going to show different um, pointing to ha'aretz instead of eretz with shagols. I can't really see. I'm doing it from memory. I can't really see. I'm sure those are, because sh- it's, it's a single at noun. So there's two shagols. And then when you put the, when you put the, um, and this is just so you can learn how to spell, not just read. And when you put the definite article there, you put a pata. And, um, and there's, you know, once again, there's rules about that. You can go back to lesson 22. You'll get some of that. Panayim, face surface from pani, the face of. Very common words. Pan, uh, panim. So panim, face occurs in the plural form, though it is singular in meaning. Panim. There we go again, lesson 21. Or 22. It's all, all found in lesson 22. Helps sort, sort that out a little bit for you. Um, ruach means spirit. Um, here, they, and there, it's kind of a disclaimer because it's going to be translated wind elsewhere. Um, ruchot, which I already went through, which is this plural form th- because it's feminine. Um, and then if you missed any of that, once again, go back, see Lesson 22. Lesson 22 is chock full of information for us being able to properly understand the first eight verses. <coughs> Excuse me. Of... Uh, of Genesis chapter 1 through 8. Mayim, uh, water is another plural form with a singular meaning. And then Vayomer, and he said, which is from Amar to say. And, um, you know, you're going to want to be able to make sure that you're conjugating your, your verbs. Knowing how to conjugate your verbs is, is really important. Um, and then we're going to talk about also. Uh, the Vav conversive a whole lot in this section, this first chapter. Why do we get, what does a Vav, Vav conversive do to us? And why is it? And then it's going to say for the biblical usage, see lesson 33, okay? For this biblical usage, see lesson 33. You want to go back and review that. And I'm saying it to sake of redundancy because I'm throwing a lot of information out here to you if when you go to lesson 33, if you don't understand what's going on with respect to biblical usage, then just, you know, email me and I will walk you through it and give you my best answer. It is a call imperfect of Amar with the Vav consecutive. And we call it Vav consecutive or Vav conversive. Just depends on what school you went to. I went to the Vav conversive school. So that's how I learned it so many, many years ago, back in the early 80s. Um, And there's just some things you just, it's hard to, hard to change. So that's why, that's why it's important, important to, to go back to Lesson 33, because it's going to teach you about the Bob consecutive or Bob conversive. And that's really why there's this issue being highlighted by this vague statement for biblical usage. Okay. Okay. Then moving on, Yahi, let it be from Haya. Uh, Yahi is a shortened form of Yahi, 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 Yahi. It will be Yahi. And then uh, Bayar, and he saw from Ra'a. Now, this is the Cal imperfect with the Bob uh, consecutive. Once again, go back, look at it in lesson 33. But it's also a weak verb, as I said before. It's a pu'al lamed hay. And you're going to have to, you're going to learn that. And why? Because you want to be able to identify it. Look, you don't have a three consonant root. Here's your root. Then there, there is uh, the yod you know, which represents the conjugation of the verb for third-person masculine singular, okay? 
And, and those getting, getting those down is so important in terms of translation. Who are we talking about? Because if you can understand how to, how to conjugate all your verbs, sometimes it allows you to figure out words that, that you're not certain of or genders that you're not certain of as well, which is very important in translation. Um, and I might show you a, a verse of scripture that really makes it radically important and has a huge impact in doctrine just because you're able to identify third person masculine singular. And that, that, that's pretty well. I've got to do that for you just so I can underscore the value of learning this. Okay, and then kito, which is something that you're supposed to be saying already because that's another way of saying cool. Kito, it's good, right? Or yofi, right? Yofi, it's beautiful. Yofi, so just, so really great words. You got you, a unique vocabulary. You don't have to go around just basically par parroting what everybody else is saying. Under what category of relative conjugates? Key, it's conjugate. And, um, uh, then we go to Vayekra uh, from Kara, he called. Kalan perfect of Kara uh, with a vowel, cons uh, with a vowel consecutive or vowel conversive again, uh, which you once again go back to lesson 30, lesson was it 22? No, I'm sorry, lesson 33 and really learn what that means. Okay, we're going to give you time. See, I'm not even going, I'm, we're not getting past vocab, I'm not even getting past the vocab here. Uh, we're just breaking down basic things here in this first lesson. And once again, you know, you just let me know if, you need, if I need to go slower, good speed, whatever, because my, the most important thing is I want you to learn this. Now, I have an objective. I want to be able to get through the chapter one, Genesis, and this 201 series. So don't slow me down too much, okay? And so let me get through the vocab here. Bayom uh, Haravi'i on the fourth day. Once again, we, we move beyond those first eight verses, and so we don't really need to get into this right now. And I think I basically run out of time, anyways. So, one last time, let me put up here one last time my email. This is the rules, guys. Oh no, how long, how long am I going to find the email? My email address. Funny. What on earth did I do with it? This is the rules. You've got questions. Um, then, oh my goodness, I'm getting in all kinds of a mess. Then just email me. I've got it here somewhere. Give me just a minute. I'll find it. We got so much up here on this. What happened? Is it lost? Did I done lose it? Ha! Ah, here we go. <laughs> here we go, folks. A W A K E S D at me dot com. That's the rules. You got a question, you got um, anything that you want me to go over, whatever, just email me there and that will set the precedence in many respects for how fast we're going and the material that we're reviewing. Love all of you. Bless you. Bye bye.